Hey everybody, Joe Diano here, aka Twisted Gemini. Wanted to welcome you to the channel. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, this is my second video on TNA since they've moved to Impact um, Impact on Pop. Excuse me. If you haven't seen the first one, go back and check it out. Um, I just wanted to say how impressed I am with everything that's been going on with Impact since it's moved to Pop TV. Um, You've got the Dollhouse, Rebel, uh, Jade, Marty Bell, who they've made drastic improvements. Ironically enough, all the improvements happened as soon as Taryn Terrell left. Um, you know, you've got Jade, for one, who's got a sick, sick finisher, the Cradle Pile Driver. Um, I, which I have to say, like I said on Twitter, I feel real bad for Madison Rain and her neck because she's taking it the, the most, this finisher. Um, you know, Rebel, I love Rebel. In my opinion, she's got one of the best entrances in TNA next to Velvet Sky. So it's like tied for first, basically. Which, like I've said on Twitter, you know, if Rebel, if she ever watches this video... I hope to God you'll give us that entrance at least, you know, one time a month. You know, all your male fans will be really happy. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, since Taryn Terrell departed from TNA, she, you know, she was a she became a born again. The the entrance for the um, the dollhouse when they show it, because in the past, like two or three episodes, they haven't shown it. It's they've been more sultry, more sexy. Um, I'm not I'm not sold on the whole awesome Kong edition yet. Um, not not because of looks, but I don't know. It just feels to me like she just doesn't fit what the dollhouse is supposed to be. You know, I kind of feel like this version of the dollhouse with Kong, she's basically just using them to help her win and to get to where she wants to be. And that's the TNA Knockouts Champion, in which in order, as some of you know, in order for her to do that, she's got to beat, without question, the greatest women's wrestler of all time, Gail Kim. You know, they've got a lengthy rivalry for the past few years in TNA. But honestly, I just, I'd rather see the Dollhouse on their own, to be honest with you. I think... Let them have their run on their own. Rebel, Jade, Marty, let them do their thing. You know, bring bring back the TNA Knockouts Tag Team titles. Let two of them hold it. You know, maybe give one of them a run as Knockouts Champion also. You know, whichever one you think deserves it the most, which more than likely will be Jade, because I know, you know, she's a veteran. Um, another thing I'm enjoying is... Um, the storyline between, although it's odd, I will admit it's odd, the storyline between Matt Hardy and EC3. And I say it's odd because I've been following Matt Hardy's career for years. Um, and it's odd seeing him now getting booed and EC3, who's been a heel for his whole career, getting cheered. Now, granted, I think EC3 is... Uh, getting cheered now because he's been doing a lot more stuff on his own. And yeah, he does get the chance you can't wrestle, but EC3, since he's come to TNA, has busted his butt and he's earned the right when he was TNA world champion to be world champion. But like I said, it's odd because you've got Matt Hardy being booed and you've got Matt um, saying a lot of disrespectful things to the fans that have been following him for like me for example like I said I followed Matt Hardy's entire career from WWE uh, to now in TNA both versions of Matt's TNA career I should say and honestly no disrespect to Matt I just I don't buy the whole heel thing I'm not gonna buy into it because you know like I said I followed him his whole career so and no disrespect to Matt he's working really hard now and much like EC3 Matt deserves to be TNA world champion but, you know, I just, I don't buy the whole, you know, money, Matt, or whatever the heck it is. I don't buy him being on Twitter, talking disrespectfully to the fans. I'm not going to buy into it. I'm still going to be uh, proud of him because, like I said, once again, I followed him his whole career. 
Um, but then you've got, you know, Matt's brother, Jeff, who's, you know, having to start out at the bottom again, working his way back up to a title opportunity, which makes sense to me, considering the fact that, you know, Jeff's been out for so long with his uh, broken leg. He's in the middle of this thing with Eric Young, which, in my opinion, Eric Young is the single best uh, heel, villain, whatever you want to call him, in professional wrestling today. Because, I mean, he faced Chris Melendez, a soldier with one leg who's now in wrestling, and he took the guy's leg, for God's sakes. When's the last time you saw something like that, other than maybe Triple H and WWE pretending to have sex with a, with a, a dead body? I mean, granted, that doesn't compare to what Eric Young's been doing. I mean, dude is outright pile driving people on steps, on the pa- the, the the floor, in the ring, and he's taking pride in doing it. So, you know, my hat is off to Eric Young also because he's, he's where he should be, where he deserves to be. Um, although I have to say one thing that I'm not... Also, I'm also not totally sold on is T. Great Uno, and not because he's not a deserving champion, because he's the X division champion now. He is. He is. Don't get me wrong, but it just it kind of bothers me that when he's in the ring, there's those occasions where it looks like he botches something, and um, you know when T. Great Uno does moves, he does those spectacular moves, but. At the same time, it's a spectacular move that could hurt somebody pretty badly. So I think, you know, maybe he needs to, like, tone it down a bit, you know, slow down a bit. Because, bro, you're banged up as it is with that shoulder thing on your shoulder. How do you think your opponents feel when you're doing one of those spectacular moves and you mess them up? You know what I'm saying? Um, You know, I love the Wolves, Eddie Edwards, Davey Richards. You know, they're in the middle of this thing now with uh, Crazy Steve and Abyss. And um, Abyss is, um, excuse me, Crazy Steve's, I guess, girlfriend, maybe? I don't know. In my my opinion, this chick would give Harley Quinn nightmares and make her wet herself. You know, she's that frightening. Um, So my hat's off. You know, another guy I take my hat off to, Crazy Steve. You know, I dig the whole crazy clown gimmick, um, which I wonder if that's kind of their play on. Um, you know, I mentioned Harley Quinn, so I wonder if that's Impact's way of making a play on um, the Joker and Harley Quinn, you know, with Crazy Steve and his new girlfriend. And I apologize for not calling her by her name. I just don't know what it is. They haven't said it yet. But, um, yeah, so it's it's kind of unique. This whole situation with um, the Wolves and Abyss and Crazy Steve, because I don't think the Wolves have ever had somebody just, you know, go right at them, you know, play the mind games with them, show them no respect, because the Wolves are one of the best tag teams in wrestling, hands down. We all know that. Uh, But, yeah, I'm enjoying that also. Um, So much respect, much props to you, Dixie Carter. I just hope, you know, that, you know, I live in New York City. Um, I've been to your shows uh, in Florida when it was in the Impact Zone, um, when it was in the Manhattan Center recently. You know, I got to see a lot of guys for the first time. I hope you'll come back to Coney Island eventually to the MCU Park with TNA. Um, And, um, yeah, because, I mean, you guys do a great job and it'd be nice to see you guys again. Um... So, yeah, I take my hat off to everybody at TNA. Great job, guys. Great job to the ladies. And um, keep up the good work. Well, that's all the time I have for now. Watch the video. Comment. Hit me up with a follow. If you comment, I'll reply. I always do. I always will. Have a good morning, afternoon, night, whatever time it is where you guys are. Be safe. Be happy. Night.